First off, I need to address something. In the previous video, a lot of people had a lot of speculation about what that thing was back there behind me. Well, I'm going to show you what it is right now. <laughs> it's just a flat piece of paper. Cue the intro! Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's week 15 of the Axial Honcho Budget Build-Off, and we are rapidly approaching what I think is going to be the end. That said, there's still a lot of fun to be had and a lot of cool things to do before we get to the end, but I did want to let you know it is wrapping up soon, and Josh and I are thinking of a great way to kind of conclude this series, and we're thinking maybe, and... Uh, we haven't totally hammered out all the details yet, but we think it might be a live stream. Instead of releasing at midnight on Wednesday, we may do an afternoon or an evening. It all depends on the timing, and because he's on the West Coast and I'm on the East Coast, there is a three-hour gap there, so maybe we could do them right one after the other. We'll have to see how that goes. Post your comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback on how you'd like to see us end this build-off. This week is all about the driver. A driver is so important to the overall look of the truck, not just in photos and video, but also to the casual observer or the person who's looking at that truck. And I, when I see a ghost truck driving around, it, it weirds me out, man. I don't, I don't like, I don't like ghosts. So first and foremost, I always make sure that I get a driver of an appropriate size for every build that I do. Size is super important. That's what she said. In this case though, uh, when you're building a small truck, it is important to have the right size driver. I try to look at real world dimensions of the actual truck and scale them down so I get an idea of what size the driver should be. For example, in ninth scale, which for me is sort of the benchmark for all the builds I do when possible, a ninth scale driver should be around eight inches tall. How do I know that a, a driver figure for a ninth scale truck should be about eight inches tall? Some very simple math, and I'm gonna run you through that math right now. If we're working in ninth scale and the driver is eight inches tall, eight times nine is 72. 72 divided by 12 is six, and that's six feet tall in ninth scale. 8 inch driver at ninth scale is going to be 6 feet tall in real life. And that's sort of an average height. I'm above average, of course. 6 feet is a good sort of base for all the drivers and if you work to that size, they will generally fit in anything that's ninth scale. This guy here is Mini Me. He's 8 inches tall and he looks awesome in a Hilux. He looks awesome in a Defender. Uh, he looks pretty good in anything that's sort of around ninth scale. Anything uh, that says it's 10th scale or so, he's going to look a little goofy, a little ridiculous, and way too tall for uh, most builds. So, with that in mind, uh, the honcho, its dimensions are a bit, you know, hard to determine because it's not really technically based on anything. It's sort of a Tacoma, so... Based on that, I went with a 7-inch character, and if you do 7 times 10, you get 70, divided by 12 to figure out inches and feet, you get 5.8, which is still a reasonably sized driver. Totally fine, totally looks good inside the truck, and yeah, that's sort of your math lesson for today. How do you like their math? probably you're probably just as confused as I usually am for this build I landed on a 7 inch character from NECA and you may be familiar with that company they've made a few different movie themed action figure lines before I didn't think it would be too safe for Deckard to be driving around without a seatbelt on so thanks to SBG member crawler addict for the idea I used braided elastic as a seatbelt material and carved up a few seatbelt mounts from styrene. Used my Dremel to make a few holes, used a Molotow chrome pen to paint them, and then installed them on the existing Corbo axial seats. You've got awesome looking, scale accurate seatbelts. This one's holding Deckard in place very nicely, and as you can see, he's quite happy 
sitting in there being the driver for all time and all eternity. I'm never letting him out. I also super glued all of the elastics. You could always sew them together, but I didn't have my sewing machine ready to go. So super glue it is. I got Deckard on Amazon for $24.99 and the jumbo braided elastic cost me $5 at my local fabric supply store. Overall, I'm really happy with the look of this driver. I think he looks like just kind of a normal dude wearing a jacket and some pants and just driving his honcho around. I try to stay away from wrestlers and action figures from comic books and such or anyone that's totally recognizable. They just kind of look weird, especially when they don't have a shirt on and they've got this expression. You gotta have a nice neutral expression because you rarely make that face unless you're going over a huge cliff. Another great source of drivers, and they are already 8 inches and ready to go, is ClassicTVToys.com. And I cannot believe I'm sharing that with you, that's been like a big time secret of mine. But they make amazing, posable characters, lots of different clothing options, lots of different heads, lots of different bodies in fact. They've already got existing lines from television shows and movies, and you may be familiar with some of them already. I try to use them whenever I can, and in fact, Mini Me is on a Classic TV Toys uh, body. The head was custom made for me, so uh, you, can, you can try to find someone that'll do that for you, but the guy that did it for me, he doesn't do it anymore, unfortunately. But these bodies are awesome, they're very poseable, and uh, you know, you can... You can break dance your way through life. And these are these are cheap too. So classictvtoys.com, I'll put the link in the description below. So let's head over to the laptop and do our tally for week 15. So with the driver from Amazon for $24.99 and the braided elastic for $5, I spent a total of $29.99 this week, leaving me a remainder of $20.01. And with the carryover from last week, I still have, wow, I still have $47.22 remaining going into week 16. What are we going to spend that money on for the last week? Pizza? Swag is still available on the Teespring website. I will make sure the link is in the description below. And hey, if you've got a t-shirt, a hoodie, a flag, a mug, a phone case, whatever you've got, Post up your photos on Instagram with the hashtag SBGSwag. I would love to see you wearing our stuff. And with that, I think it's time to end. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it very much. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Be also sure to ring the notification bell as that's the only way you will know when we go live. Unless, of course, I announce it on Facebook or Instagram. But ringing that bell does notify you when new content happens on the Scale Builders Guild channel. So please make sure to do that. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week for week 16.